Well, so far we've talked about the fact that you can declare a string using the string uh, uh, data type. You can use double quotes to have a string literal. We've talked about the double equal sign versus the equals method. And we also got a little bit into some of the methods that were available to you in the Java API documentation, some of strings methods. We saw how to call a few of them. Uh, there's another bullet point I need to get to though. It says here that strings are immutable, immutable. That's our word of the day, right? So immutable means not changeable. You're not allowed to modify a string. Hmm. Not allowed to modify a string. Let me type in a little bit of code here. I have string name one equals Jamie, and I'll say string, or I'll just say name one equals. There we go. Name one equals name one dot to upper case. Capitalize everything. And then we'll just print out whatever is currently stored inside of name one. Run it. And it has all capital letters Jamie. So, but we just said you can't change strings. It sure looks like we changed a string. We switched it to be all capital letters. Let me show you what's happening behind the scenes. So perhaps you can get a better feel for, for, for what we mean by the fact that these things are, are immutable. And so again, I'll, I'll be doing a little bit of drawing here. We had uh, done something along the lines of string name one equals Jamie. It's my first name. And then we said something like name one equals name one dot two upper case. Semicolon. All right, well, let's break this down as to what's happening behind the scenes. Name one is a variable and it's pointing out at a chunk of memory that stores a string inside of it. And in that chunk of memory, we have the word Jamie. So let's go ahead and draw the little arrow here pointing. I always get that wrong, hitting the right, wrong key sequence. There's my arrow. So name one is pointing over at Jamie. Well, on the next line of code, so that's fine. That's what the first line of code does. Next line of code, we call name one dot two uppercase. This is where immutability comes in. Anytime you try to modify an object, a string object, it really doesn't change a string. What it does is it actually creates a whole new string for you with the changes in place there. And so a brand new chunk of memory gets allocated. And in that new chunk of memory, we go ahead and have the all capitalized version of my name. Well, since we say name one equals name one dot two uppercase, we're actually taking that a uh, variable and we're changing what it's pointing to. Instead of it pointing to the first thing, the first string with Jamie uh, with the lowercase letters, it's now pointing over to Jamie with the capital letters. And maybe I'll even switch over to a, a different color here and uh, oops, cross that out. That way perhaps we can be clear. So the, the red here is, uh, what's happening with this equal sign. We're saying, take whatever name one to uppercase did and store that into my name one variable. So the variable, the address, the pointer changed, but the contents of that first string never did change. It still has Jamie in it. And if something else is pointing at it, you would still be able to get back to it. In this case, I guess we lost the pointer. We crossed it out there. So be careful. Anytime you try to change a string, you might accidentally end up with multiple objects created behind the scenes. We'll do something else kind of similar to it. Let's, let's uh, write a little bit more code here. We'll uh, say, um, well, I guess, I guess I could just do it right below here. I'll say, oh, name one equals name one plus space plus Romero, semicolon. All right. Uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. I think this is in one of the very first uh, things we talked about uh, in this course. But you can use a plus sign with strings to concatenate. That's another thing that's special about string. One thing that's special is you can use the double quotes to declare, declare a literal. And the other thing that's special is you can use the plus sign to concatenate strings together. But just like before, you can't change a string. It's immutable. So what's truly happening in the background is that yet another chunk of memory is allocated. And now we have whatever was stored inside of name one, which is Jamie all capital, plus a space, plus Romero, 
those things all get squished together into a new object. And again, maybe we'll cross out what we were pointing at before, and we'll draw our arrow now pointing there. So name one no longer points to Jamie all caps, but rather it points to Jamie Romero uh, concatenated together. We can't change a string, but you certainly can do things like concatenating or call methods and maybe change the thing that's, that's pointing to it. So maybe it's a subtle difference, but you really aren't changing the string itself. So that's what the book's getting into. String objects are immutable. They cannot be changed. Even though we have this handy concatenation op uh, operator, uh, it's, that plus is actually building a brand new string object behind the scenes for us. We also have this example, compare.java. Compare.java takes command line arguments, whatever you pass in, and as long as you pass two arguments in, it checks to see if they're double equal to each other, and then it checks to see if they're EQUALS, equals, you call the equals method on them. And so uh, to run this, you're going to need to uh, set up a run configuration. We talked about this in one of the earlier chapters, in the Eclipse chapter. You can uh, create a brand new configuration, and we want to have it run that comparer. But for the arguments, we'll pass in two things, two strings, maybe Jamie space Jamie, space separate them. And it'll tell you if they're equal equal or if they're EQAL. And you can run this as many times as you want. Just go back into that run configurations and change your arguments to different values. Uh, interestingly enough, when you use the command line arguments, it's always going to allocate new memory. It doesn't do that shortcut we talked about a bit ago where uh, with literals, how it uh, can recycle the, the memory. And you'll see that when you run it. So please try this out. Run uh, compare.java on your systems and uh, get back with me in a few minutes. And we'll talk a little bit more about the string literals.